What's up you guys I'm back with another video and in today's video we're going to talk about how to become a full stack developer or what is the fastest way to become a software engineer so let's get started All right so let's start with what is a full stack developer right so a full stack developer is an engineer who can basically handle any part of the application stack so think of any popular tech company like Instagram or Airbnb so if you see Instagram as an application whether it's your mobile app or your web app you can go to instagram.com or you can use it on your android phone or your ios phone so you log into your instagram app that is called the front end of the app basically it's the client facing side so it's the front end of the application that's how it's called in the programming terminology so that's the front end of the app and then the front end makes calls to the back end so whenever you open the app or you refresh your page what happens is your front end makes an http request to the back end and it fetches the images right so when your friend posts a new picture it's stored in instagram servers that is the back end and your app will make a request to the back end so that instagram servers will push those images to your front end and then the front end renders it so that you can see it on your app this is the whole stack basically front end app then there is the middleware which is let's not get too much into it because the more you get into it the more there are things to talk about so on a very high level there's a front end application there's a back end server and these to communicate with some protocol uh, mostly http and then uh, behind this back end server there's a database which can be an sql database or a no sql database so there are different use cases for both sql and no sql databases both are very useful and you will have to learn either one of them because uh, as a full stack developer your job is to know front end back end and database so that wherever there is a requirement of an engineer wherever a feature needs to be built whether it's a new api that's to be written it's a new front end feature that needs to be built a full stack developer is always up for the job and that's why there is so much demand right so the demand for full stack developers has increased like dramatically over the past few years and today trust me when i say this there are plenty of jobs and plenty of high paying jobs across the world for full stack developers and for front end and back end developers as well so basically you need the skill set to build an entire app from end to end another big benefit of being a full stack developer is that you know how to build an app end to end right so any time you get an idea maybe you have an idea for the next instagram right so you can build it on your own from back end to the front end you know you can completely build it and launch it and create your own startup that's one of the biggest benefits of learning full stack and that's why i got into it in the first place because it gives me the power to build any app that i want today i can build an instagram and whatsapp anything right you you're capable of it and you have the skill set required and you know sky's the limit so to become the full stack developer it's not it's not a direct thing that you can go and do this thing and you become a full stack developer right it's a step by step process you need to start at some point and then grow into the whole stack so it's easy for most people to get started with the front end because it is more intuitive and you you will gain interest like back end is slightly more difficult and you don't see your result right when you're working on a front end project you will code something and you will see the result and that sort of inspires you and and that sort of keeps you going right so that's why i suggest most of you start with front end and slowly make your way to the back end and that's how you will become a full stack developer so the road map to become a full stack developer is simple you will start at some point you will start at front end you will learn html css if you already know them good for you start with react so react is a big ecosystem so definitely there's a lot you can do in react there's also react native which can be used to develop mobile apps So learn React. Once you're once you're good enough with React, build some projects. If you feel comfortable with front end, then definitely apply for front end jobs, and you will have a great experience. So that you will learn even more in your job, and you will be paid to learn. That's the biggest thing, right? So you're building their product, but you're also learning while building real world products. You will learn the most. Trust me on that. So after after learning React, now you want to move to a back end framework. You can start with let's say Node JS and Express. That's a great place, and a lot of companies are using this kind of stack, which is entirely a JavaScript stack. right so it can be a mean or a mern stack so that's mongodb express angular and node js or mongodb express react and node js so this is a very popular stack which was really popular back in 2018 and 19 In 2020, I'm guessing that React will stay. I think Angular slowly will phase out because uh, it has a steep learning curve, and very few big companies are still on Angular, and it changes a lot. So I think React is the best place to start. So I don't want to start a framework war here. If you have any other opinions, leave them in the comment. Let's have a healthy discussion. And all these frameworks, right? Pretty much, you can use any framework to build any sort of application. So that doesn't matter. What matters is how easily you can pick it up and how comfortable you feel in those kind of frameworks. So start with React, and on the back end look at node.js and express or you can start with a python based back end which is django or flask so there are plenty of frameworks for both front end and back end you can basically pick any of them whichever you like 
and just make sure that you learn it enough and you gain an expertise in that to a point where you can build a complete application using whatever stack. So if you if you go to the founder of Instagram and ask him why he chose the technologies that he chose, he'll probably tell you that it doesn't matter, right? He picked the one that was easiest for him and he picked the one that would be the fastest to launch the product, right? So it, it doesn't matter. Instagram can be made with a completely different stack and it will still work the same and will not be an issue at all. So my personal recommendation would be to learn React and Node.js and Express because that's a complete JavaScript stack and it's a it's a very popular stack right now in 2020 and going forward also. So that's my suggestion, but don't feel bound to my suggestions and you can pick any technology. Technology is important, but it's not the main thing, right? The main thing is your skill as a full stack developer that you're able to build a product end to end. So that's your skill set. And finally, you can also go back and look into a database. I would suggest if you're a beginner, go with a NoSQL based database like MongoDB or Firebase. You know, these are very easy to get started with. It will use an object based storage, which will be which will be easy to pick up compared to SQL. But if you seriously want to learn backend and database, I think SQL is a must. SQL is a fantastic technology. It is a very old one, but it is definitely highly relevant today and it will always be there because SQL is sort of the, the standard go-to database system, which makes all sorts of jobs possible. So if you want to get serious about the backend, then definitely you have to learn SQL. SQL is a very important skill and it will also help you in sort of data science and ML related job roles because SQL is used there as well. And trust me, you can self learn all these technologies. You can become a full stack developer on your own. You don't have to pay anyone. You don't have to buy any uh, extra resources. You can totally become a full stack developer by self learning on your own for free. So one big problem with today's learning is there are so many resources on the internet, right? Everyone has their own tutorials and so many different uh, websites and courses. So uh, you might get confused. So I'll make it very simple for you. I have two options for courses. First is Scrimba and second is Free Code Camp. So if you're a person who doesn't need a sort of a video based lecturing and who can just read their way and solve problems and learn on their own, then Free Code Camp is the way to go. Free Code Camp is absolutely free of cost. It's an open source project and it's a big project. They also give you certifications, right? In the end, you will have a lot of projects and you will get a certification. So that certification can be used to get a job, right? That certification is quite valuable. To be honest, you don't really need any sort of certification as long as you have the skills. But that certification definitely helps because it adds credibility to your application. It shows that you have put in the hours and you have completed the course on FCC. I'll put the link down in the description so you can directly go to the website. And the second resource I have for you is, so some of you might get bored and not feel motivated enough to go over a text-based uh, you know, course. So Scrimba is a great place for you guys. So Scrimba has this new format where the video itself has an embedded editor. So you can pause the video at any moment and edit the code on screen and see the output in real time, right? That's an amazing new technology. And I definitely think that Scrimba is worth checking out. It's fairly new right now. So they have a lot of free courses. Just go on their website and look for the HTML and CSS crash course. If you're a beginner or look for a React starter kit or something, they have plenty of courses across the stack. So definitely check out Scrimba and as always I'll put the link down in the description so you can go ahead and check it out. So these are the two resources that I would recommend. So they are more than enough for you to learn the entire skill set of a full stack developer. So apart from these also there are plenty of sources. Pretty much you can pick anyone on the internet. I mean not anyone just see the reviews and see their past performances so you will have an idea of what kind of course you're looking into. So a big part of your job as a software engineer will be to be a problem solver, right? So you will definitely run into problems whether you're doing the courses on Scrimba or FCC or any other course, right? So in between your coding assignments or programming tasks, you will definitely run into problems, errors, and that's the way to learn, right? You will have to go to Google or go to DuckDuckGo and you will have to search for that error. You will find the results in GitHub. You will find the results on Stack Overflow. Just go to Stack Overflow. You will find the answer to pretty much every single coding related question, every issue that you face. Chances are that someone else has already faced that issue and someone else has already uh, found the solution for you and they have put it on Stack Overflow. So definitely whenever you run into the issues, just copy that issue, paste it on Google find Stack Overflow and you know, you will definitely be able to solve the problem. So that's a big part of your learning because even while you're working at a job, you will run into problems and the first approach to solving a problem is to search for it online because chances are that it's a common problem, right? These kind of problems 
happen to everyone. I think every software engineer or a developer uses Stack Overflow and it's a great tool and should definitely make use of it. So how much time do you need to learn all this? So depending on how much time you put in, right? If you're a student and you have plenty of time, you can easily put in uh, four, five hours a day or you can put in even more, then uh, it will be faster for you. You can pretty much finish all the courses in maybe two or three months and you will be ready to uh, completely be a software engineer and work for a paid job, right? A highly paid job. So apart from that, if you already have a full-time job and this is a side thing that you're doing, I would still suggest put in at least one or two hours a day so that uh, over a period of three to six months, you will be able to complete these courses and gain the skill set, right? The skill set is the most important part. Once you have these skills, you are employable anywhere in the world. And another important thing is that as you're learning these courses, right, as you're working on your programming skills, you should always be working with projects, all right? Projects are very important because projects will get you your job, basically. When you're learning React or when you're learning uh, Vue.js, you want to build projects to showcase your skills. So when a company is looking at you, they want to see what kind of projects you've worked on, what sort of an application you have built already. So you can have projects and in the end, you should build a portfolio of your own. So just grab a domain or GitHub will give you a free domain. But anyway, this brings me to another important thing. Learn GitHub, right? Create a GitHub account. And as you work on these projects, just keep pushing them to GitHub so that you can show your projects wherever required. You can show the source code and you can demonstrate it on your GitHub pages website. Definitely learn GitHub. It's a very useful skill. All software engineers need to have Git as a skill set because when you're in a company, you will be collaborating with a lot many people. For your personal projects, you don't really need GitHub, but it will help you to learn how GitHub works, how the whole version control system works so that it will be very helpful when you start working because in that case, you will be collaborating with so many different people over some sort of version control system, whether it's GitHub or Bitbucket or anything, right? And finally, build your own portfolio. To build a very good, beautiful portfolio, it doesn't have to be anything complicated. Just make sure you're able to highlight your projects and you're able to uh, send the message, right? I'm a full stack developer and I'm based out of so and so place and I'm, I'm looking for opportunities. I'm looking forward to work on exciting projects. And so that's how you will create your portfolio so that anyone who looks at your website can see that, yeah, this guy is a front end developer. This guy is a back end developer. These are his skills. This is his resume. These are his projects and this is what he's worked on. So once in the, in the next three to six months, you have learned all the skills, you have built the projects, you have built your portfolio. Now is the time to start applying for jobs. So you will go to any job portal. So my preferred uh, portal would be AngelList and and there are plenty of jobs on AngelList. I will leave the link down in the description for you. So if you go to AngelList and just search for software engineers, filter for uh, remote only positions, filter for front end developers, you can see that there are plenty of jobs. And if you see the requirements, they'll be the same. Have some experience in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, have React, have Node.js or Python, you know. So once you go to AngelList, create your own profile and start applying to jobs. I would say just send a lot of applications, send 10 applications per day. And meanwhile, on the side, you will have to start your interview prep because interview prep is slightly different from learning to program because you will have to learn a lot of data structures and problem solving techniques. So if you're a student or some kind of IT jobs, you already know what data structures are. And if you are not, then also I would suggest that look at the basics of data structures and stuff because uh, most of these companies will have your coding interviews and they will want to ask you about data structures and algorithms. So I will also make more videos on interview prep and stuff like that. Just subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more videos. I will make a lot of tutorials and how to prepare for interviews, how to build your portfolio. A lot, lot of ideas are there and I want to execute them this year. So definitely subscribe to my channel and wait for these videos, all right? So you keep applying for 10, 10, 15 jobs per day so that you will hear back from at least 5% of them and you will get interviews and then it's all up to you. Once you clear the interviews, you will get the job. And once you get the job, come back to this video and uh, go down in the comment box and just describe how your experience was and what kind of job you got and I'll be happy to read them. And hopefully every single one of you is able to, uh, you know, learn all these skills. But provided you are hardworking and you put in the hours, I hope that you are able to learn those skills and get that job that you admire and, you know, be successful. All right. So uh, that's it about this video. And if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. If you have any other questions, you can ask me in the comments or you can reach out to me on my Instagram. So I will try my best to answer your questions and definitely uh, build a community over here. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I have a lot more videos coming for you guys. And that's it. Thanks for watching.